Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Vaughn Hanshaw, the host of your program today. No, most of you, or all of you, probably know what has transpired in my life over the past week or so. For those of you that don't know, I'm going to catch you up on everything and bring you up to speed and up to date on what's going on in my life. On Christmas Eve, I was getting ready to go to bed and I fell out of my wheelchair through a freak accident. I was on the floor in excruciating agony and pain in a very deadly, dangerous, life-threatening situation. Now, let me preface all this by saying this in case some of y'all don't know. I've had muscular dystrophy now for 37 years. And uh, I'm in a wheelchair. I cannot stand up or walk or anything. I live alone. I have uh, nursing aides that come in uh, five or six hours a day to help me, take care of me, things of that nature. Although right now, I'm, uh, I'm on the way back to my nursing home. Not my nursing home, to a nursing home. And when I tell you this story, you're going to see why. I went to move my laundry basket out of my way on Christmas Eve about 11.30 that night. I was getting ready to go to bed. And when I reached over to get it, it threw me off balance in my wheelchair. Before I knew it, I was on top of the basket, on the floor. My knees hit the floor. My left arm, which is cut up and bruised up a little bit, was caught in the basket under me, twisted, which has further hurt this shoulder that was already hurt. Couldn't move because you can see my arms here. I have hardly any muscle left at all after 37 plus years of battling this muscle eating disease. I was on the floor and I live alone, in case I didn't already say that. I was on the floor concrete floor here where I live for nine hours in excruciating pain. Uh, my neck right there landed on top of the hard rim of the laundry basket which was trying to cut my air off where I couldn't breathe. I was caught on the other end of the basket on my pelvic bones, which I have a pretty good size of bruise and a little cut on the left side over that. Thank God nothing was broken or more serious than what it was. I'm bruised up, banged up, sore, and stoved up, but I'm here by God's grace. That nine hours on the floor shipped me back into reality. I cried out to God. I had no one. My phone was dead on the charger. 
in, in the other room of this call light was hanging on the arm of my wheelchair just out of reach where I couldn't reach it. And I had no one to help, no way to call anyone for help. No one knew I was in that situation until my nurse came the next morning at 8 a.m., found me in that predicament. During those nine hours of excruciating, agonizing pain on that floor, on that floor, with my throat hanging on the rim of that basket, feeling like I was going to die, knowing that if I was to slip that way, where it would have caught me full right there, instead of on the side, knowing if I moved just two inches over, I would have absolutely smothered to death, choked to death, and died. There's no way around that. Because I cannot push myself up. How I land is how I lay. That's it. During those nine hours on that floor, I cried out to God. I said, please, Jesus, help me through this. If you'll help me through this, I'll serve you for the rest of my life. Now, I'm here right now by an absolute miracle of Jesus Christ. It is an absolute miracle that I didn't die. And I believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ answered my prayer that night, all that night. I prayed, I prayed to God, prayed to Jesus. The following week, I had another bad episode, physically. Two days in a row, I'm not going to get into it. I was going to go to the ER, and my doctor said, go to the emergency room. I wanted to go. I was hurting horribly bad. I cried out to Jesus. I said, Jesus, help me get through this. Help me resolve this so I don't have to go and go through all the hospitalization again. I didn't even get the prayer out of my mouth till it began to get resolved. Uh, what was happening, I could tell. I'm not going to get into it. It's very personal, very private. But it was a instantaneous thing that happened. Or there's no way that's a coincidence. You see, ladies and gentlemen, I left God in March of 2017 for various reasons. I ran hard away from God. But one thing that I never could shake or get away from or ignore or sweep under the rug or uh, get out of my 
mind was the things that I saw God do during my 39 years of being a Christian before I left God. I never could overcome those things that I saw. But there was no doubt about it. God did it. God did it. I add this one to the list, these two, here in less than a week. These two miracles that God did for me. I add those two to the list. So, a few days ago, I came back to Jesus Christ. I repented of my sins. I turned my life back over to God. And I'm now a Christian. I return to Christianity. And I did that because I firmly believe that Jesus Christ answered both of my prayers this week. The nine-hour ordeal and then the other ordeal in the middle of the week uh, that was a very painful situation as well. So, I'm going to be making God willing videos now from a Christian standpoint from a minister standpoint because I was a minister 30 years before I left him and I hope you don't get upset at me over this uh, I really hope that we can still be friends I've made a lot of friends over these last five years in the, in the pagan world, atheists, agnostics, uh, Buddhists, uh, I mean, any strife of religion you can name, I, I've made friends, uh, I consider good friends uh, with you guys. But that, that's, that's your business, so that's none of my concern, really. But, uh, just wanted to come on here and give you an update on what I'm doing. I feel like I'm the prodigal son that's returned home. You know, the story of the prodigal son is found over there in Luke chapter 15. And he left home. He ran, I guess, away from the father's home. Went and did his own thing for a while. We're not really sure to how, how long he was gone. It doesn't give us that information. But it does give us some insights that he had to hit rock bottom before he woke up. And laying in there on that floor for nine hours was my rock bottom. The, let me articulate this correctly if I can. The overwhelming feelings of helplessness, of complete vulnerability, the feelings of being alone with no one to rescue you in a life and death experience like that. 
the overwhelming feeling of I'm likely going to die like this. That was my rock bottom. That was my rock bottom in the big bed. When I cried out to God. And he heard me. And he answered me. He delivered me. He rescued me. He chose to keep me alive for an absolute purpose. Do I know what that is? No. I don't. But I feel it in my soul. I do believe that he's not done with me yet. Although I had written him off. I not, I not only ran from God, but being the type A personality that I am, the bold nature of my personality that I have, I not only ran away from God, I, as you know, For over four years, I spoke out very boldly against God. Yet, in the floor, in that, my bedroom right in there, he answered my prayer. He allowed me to live without suffering any serious injuries. Which is an, I can't say this enough, it's an absolute miracle, y'all. It's a miracle. If you would see my body, I weigh 98 pounds. My body, after 37 years of battling the muscular dystrophy, my body is emaciated. I'll show you my arm. It's just bone right there. See that bone? My legs. You can see my ribs. I mean, I'm just skin and bones, literally. For me not to get seriously injured or killed or die with suffocation or a broken neck or any number of situations that could have ended my life within a blink of an eye. I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that God Almighty has still got his hand on me. He showed me twice this week as I've already said it. By answering my prayers. That he is not done with me yet. There's still a work. For me to do for him. So. This is the prodigal. I've come home. I've come back to God. And I feel good about it. I feel very good about it. I missed him, to be frankly honest with you. Now that I'm back to praying, reading the Bible, I missed my times of prayer and intimate communication with him that me and God had all seen. What a lot of you don't understand about me is I never was angry at God. I was upset at the church people. I never was upset at God. The men God 
since I was a boy, we had a very close, intimate relationship, especially during my times of prayer and meditation and things like that. And I miss those times with him. And, uh, you know, this is the path for me. And I come back to it. And uh, I'm not going to argue over this with anyone. Like I said, I hope you all understand. I hope you all still love me and still call me your friend. I still love each one of you all, still consider you all my friends. But I'm not going to argue over this. I'm just not physically in the shape to argue over it, and, and I don't really want to argue over it. Um, so, I've seen too much. I'm the prodigal returning home to the, to the Father. And uh, I just wanted to make this video to bring you up to date on all that's transpired in the last seven, eight days or so. Thank you all for watching. I love each and every one of you all. Y'all have a good day.